Although I specialize in behavior and classroom management now, that was not always my story as a beginning teacher. I often struggled with multiple behaviors in my classroom. And in order to make the transition, there are a number of things that I had to stop doing in order to be effective in my classroom management. And so in today's video, I am sharing six things that I've stopped doing to be more effective in my classroom management. Coming up next. Hi everybody, Michelle Holiday here. I'm a behavior strategist and I help teachers, schools, districts, and youth organizations learn how to manage their students and their learning environments with less stress and less struggle. And in today's video, we are talking all about things that I had to stop doing to be more effective in classroom management. When it comes to classroom management, what you do is very important, but also what's important is what you stop doing. So let's get started. One of the first things I stopped doing was focusing on what was going wrong. Even though it's important to know what the challenges are, by only focusing on what's going wrong, it does not move you forward in terms of finding solutions and strategies for your classroom. So once I saw what was wrong and I was aware of the issues around what was happening, then I started to focus on solutions and strategies that I could implement to begin to reduce, change, and hopefully stop the behavior that was happening in my classroom. When you start to change your focus, it changes how you respond and how you interact with your students. The second thing I stopped doing is I stopped using the school behavior plan as my only resource for classroom management. Now, if you're a new teacher, I understand they say, okay, this is how we're going to deal with behavior. But often what you don't understand is that overall plan really deals with behaviors in an overall way. But what happens when you have specific behaviors that don't meet the criteria for what the school has in mind? You're going to have to come up with something in your classroom that you can use that connects to the school plan. I learned this the hard way that the school plan didn't solve every issue, especially the smaller ones in my classroom. And then I had to begin to develop something for myself that worked for my students, as well as how I teach and manage my own classroom. The third thing I started doing is thinking that it is impossible for change to happen. One of the things I've started to see um, in social media, um, in different groups, is that teachers are feeling like there is no help, there is no light at the end of the tunnel. I felt like that myself. And so what I had to stop doing is saying, okay, you know what, this is impossible. There's no way that I'm, we're going to overcome this. I began to change my mindset. And I said, you know what, everything is figure outable. Everything has a solution. That doesn't mean that I'm the solution, but understanding that progress can happen even with the most challenging behaviors. The fourth thing I stopped doing is I stopped doing things that did not bring behavior change in my classroom. So some of the things that I used to do back in the day is I would threaten my students, not for their life or anything like that, but if you don't do this, I'm gonna send you to the office. If you don't do that, I'm gonna call your mother. If you don't do this, this will happen. And oftentimes I had no intention of calling the parent. I had no intention of sending them to the office, but what I was trying to do is just trying to get them to stop their behavior, hoping that the threats would work. Uh, I stopped yelling at my students. I thought that by yelling at my students, it would make them stop, only to make me lose my voice. I stopped having them write these phrases like, I will not talk or I will not disrupt the classroom over and over and over, thinking that if they got tired of writing it out, that things would change. I also stopped waiting for the student to be expelled or sent out of the classroom because let me just tell you, most of my students were not going anywhere. Instead, they were definitely coming to school every single day. The fifth thing that I stopped doing is I stopped viewing my students as evil or monsters. Now, we don't talk about this a lot, but sometimes in the teacher's lounge or in those other places, we have some pretty disparaging things to say about our students. And so I had to stop not only saying things, but I had to start believing things because at the end of the day, our students are young people. Our students are learning, they're developing, they're growing. And let's be real, they're growing up in a really challenging society. And so I had to start seeing them as students whose needs were not being met, students who didn't have the skill set to navigate the situation. And when I started seeing them as students in need, instead of evil people trying to take over my classroom, 
things began to change. And the sixth thing that I stopped doing is I stopped blaming myself for the students' behaviors. Oftentimes as teachers, we take on the blame when things don't go right in our classroom, even our students' behaviors. And so I had to stop saying, oh, it's because I don't have the skill set. Oh, it's because I'm too soft. Oh, it's because of whatever I came up with at that time. What I started to do instead is say, okay, this is a work in progress. Okay, I'll learn how to handle this. Okay, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And when I stopped blaming myself and started focusing more on interventions, the environment and my classroom also changed for the better. So there you have it, six things that I stopped doing to be more effective in my classroom management. What things are you willing to stop doing in your classroom to be more effective when it comes to your classroom management? Leave it in the comments below. See you next time. Ooh.